Lime High School for the second half of our soccer doubleheader in the district semifinals tonight. Ontario going toe to toe with Norwalk, the number two seed against the number three. And we are just about set for action as we step aside for a quick moment to honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Beautiful fall night here at Clyde High School for some district soccer action. I'm Brian Skrotsky, Garrett Partlett joining me here on the call. And this is the matchup that we've been waiting for here today, G. A couple of teams that met earlier on in the campaign. Ontario at home, a 4-3 winner over Norwalk. A match that came down to the final minutes and we're expecting more of the same here to decide who will move on and face Lexington for the district title. Yeah, this is the matchup that, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit closer than that, that first matchup was Brian here up at Clyde in the, you know, the district semifinal. Looking to play, you know, Lexington in that district final. They won the game earlier, so now, you know, the date is set. Thursday, here we go. Who's going to win here to take on Lexington, the perennial favorite here? But Ontario, Norwalk, you mentioned it, Brian. Ontario was able to knock them off 4-3 earlier in the season. Ontario, a little bit of a hot streak. They've won five of the last seven, so they've been getting it done. They, they rely on Gage Weaver a lot. He's going to be, you know, a uh, bulk majority of the offense, and they're going to need him to step up big tonight versus that Norwalk team that's coming in here, uh, you know, with their head under that they, other than they lost to Perkins on October 3rd, by and they hadn't lost since August 27th. So both of these wow. squads have been winning and winning in bunches here in the past couple months. Yeah, 13 victories on the season for Norwalk, 11 so far at this point for the Warriors, who are off to a quick start here. Looking to shift the ball to the outside for Brandon Literal. He's able to keep it in bounds. Yes, yeah, the Warriors shaping up for a shot. Leaving it for Zane Fulmer now. And it's going to be blasted out of there by Norwalk. Got a great defensive unit when you look at these truckers and how they've been able to compete so far, G. And a lot of goals. I mean, competing in the conference that they do, there's going to be a lot of scoring. But they're just giving up 0.88. Per contest. Yeah, they're averaging almost scoring seven a game. They not a score. Look at this one. Only way he was going to be able to touch that ball was with his head and able to do so on the ground, but smooth. You mentioned it, Brian. Norwalk, they can score in a high velocity, and then they also, you know, their defense has been stellar so far, not even allowing a goal so far this season. So, you know, they lost to that Ontario earlier this season. However, you know, that was very early in the season. And so, you know, times have changed. Teams have matured a little bit so far this season. So it's going to be a different, you know, measuring stick here tonight between these two clubs. Spencer Callahan, one of the playmakers for the Truckers. Look for him on this left wing to be heavily involved in the offense as the night wears along. And for Ontario, up top, Gage Weaver, definitely the dude that they're going to be looking for. The leading scorer in North Central Ohio, 36 goals for this kid. And he was one of the top scoring threats last year as well. And a guy that was a converted keeper yeah. as a sophomore. And he's become the biggest weapon I think that we have scoring, maybe outside of Alex Depperschmidt. And Alex telling us in our post-game interview after scoring two goals and having an assist for the Minutemen in the first game tonight. He wants the Warriors. They want to play him again. They faced them so far in the district title game the last three seasons, and it's always on the purple and gold's way, so I guess why not? Why not call on your Whistling County rivals yet again? 
you, know, you you love to play, you know, rival. It adds an extra, you know, jolt, an extra juice to that game that, you know, just makes you wake up a little bit sooner and wake up for game day a little bit quicker. But, you know, they're rivals in all sports, you know, not only just, you know, soccer, but everything outside of that. But it, it would be an exciting one because it seems as if the Richland County is always dominating here up here at Clyde. And it's going to be a dish final, you know, in Richland County on Thursday. But. I think I still got to go through Norwalk, which is going to be a tougher test than I think it was early, even earlier in the season when they when they did win that one. Great acceleration there by Brandon. Keeps the ball in play. Looking to make a 1v1 move. It's going to be knocked away. So big throwing coming up here for Ontario. Deep in enemy territory. And sometimes they'll have Gage bring it in. He's got a huge arm. A, a big prospect on the baseball diamond. I believe already committed actually to play for Ashley University at the next level. Instead, they'll have Stewart trigger it in. Big Toss trying to find Weaver. And it's headed up by Gamble. And now cleared here by the truckers. No shots yet on either side. Ontario nearly changed that. But now Norwalk trying to chase it out of their end. They'll hang on to possession. I think this is going to be a little bit more def a more defensive game, Brian, than we saw in that first one. Both these teams, Ontario, only allows about one and a half goals a game. And we already mentioned Norwalk. They hold opponents under a goal a game. So expect the defenses, you know, to, to kind of take tone to this second match. But that all could change in a hurry from the likes of, you know, goal scorers like Gage Weaver, who's got 36 on the season. It's going to result in a goal kick coming up. And I think you're right, just two evenly matched teams here. A lot at stake. A couple of phenomenal defenses. Warriors dropped four on them earlier in the season, but outside of that match, Norwalk not allowing more than two in any contest. Warriors going to drop it back here for Carter Weaver. Great defender. He's got a big leg. Flips it forward for Fulmer. And that cross over the touch line. And another goal kick coming up here for Norwalk. I want to throw out some thank yous to our generous sponsors, helping you bring... Live and free coverage here on the Orchard Report. Avita Workwell, our scoreboard sponsor tonight. Mechanics Bank will be on your instant replay. Sutton Bank, your pregame. And also your player of the game this evening. So big thank yous to all those great sponsors. Oh. Whew. Big shot right in the face that time of McGinty. He wore it well. He almost... Just try to pretend like it didn't happen. I'm yeah. Just in my socks. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. I think the fans had more of a reaction than <laughs> yeah, I think we did too. That one's going to be scooped up by Omar Abdelaziz. It's been sharp in net for Ontario all season. Another big clear here by the Truckers. A lot of white jerseys around Engage Weaver. Here is Gage flipping it to the outside here for Fulmer. Zane drops it back, middle, lays it off. One time shot! Barely off target. That one barely missed, too. Gage Weaver right here. Take a look at the pass and somehow gets a foot on it. Almost bends it in. Just goes over top of that goal back there. Maybe by a foot or two, but what a start that would have been for the Warriors here. They're able to cash one in, get the lead, and try to play some great defense. And now Norwalk trying to get on the attack on the other side. 
Warriors able to recollect themselves and get back defensively. Initially, it looked like there was a step up top there for Omar Dominguez. But the Warriors recovered nicely. And now Dominguez a little bit hobbled on the far side after making that deep run. That one pinged way up top. And now Dominguez lobs one. Top of the box. It's headed down, but no problem for Abdelaziz off the dome of shop. That was Norwalk's best try here so far here early tonight. Just eight minutes in and able to get across and shop, able to get ahead on it. Not enough force behind it, though. His abilities able to save that one. Ontario with bodies moving forward. Kind of a bad giveaway there by Brandon Literal as had him spread across about four guys. And that one mismeasured there from Weaver, so it'll be out of bounds on the far side. Throwing coming up here for the Truckers. Looking to get into the district finals for the first time in a long time with Richland County really running things, as Garrett alluded to. If the Warriors win tonight, we're looking at, what, the, the sixth straight meeting between them to decide the district the title? Fifth or sixth for sure. Yeah, it would be the sixth. That's been since 2017, Brian. Yeah, every year. Last time that didn't happen was 2016 when Lexington played Norwalk in the semifinal and then eventually would play Vermillion in the district final and lose that one. Did the Miniman to Vermillion 2-3. Big ball bit behind Weaver. Drops down here for Literal. Shifts it out wide. And that one, a couple hops. And controlled here by the goalie. So far, not, not too many great looks, Brian, for really either squad. No one-on-one -on -one opportunities. I think the best look for the Warriors was that Gage Weaver shot from about 20 yards out where it sailed just over top, and then the other side probably the header from Shop. They didn't end up falling, but so far no one-on-ones. Defense is at least able to pack it in and, and stop some of those chances in space for either side. As now Norwalk looks to try to get their offense going, but I think it's going back to the Warriors. Carter allows the defense to come to him. Gets it off last second. Good looking turn on the far side from Stewart. Actually, this is Walters up top. Give and go in traffic. Help side defense being offered right now by the truckers, but Ontario starting to get some numbers forward. And that's the ball they like. Ontario brings it out to the wing. They'll lob big balls into the box and allow some of their athletes to just make big charges. And more often than not, Gage Weaver could typically get in there and at least create some type of a chaos inside of the enemy box. Seen it once so far. Expect quite a few more opportunities for him as we're just 11 minutes into the match. And nice creative flow going on here. Fulmer just missing Weaver that time. And then that shot, I think, deflected. So, see a corner kick for the Warriors. And they tried to go to Weaver right there, too, but kind of just misjudged it. Went right underneath him as Ontario did get a shot off, but just wide left of that goal, deflected by the Truckers, results in an Ontario corner kick. So, a good chance here for the Warriors to try to get on the board. Just a couple minutes in. Dante McGinty near post. Carter Weaver, I think, got a little piece of his lid on it. Check it out on the Mechanics Bank replay. Yeah, he definitely did. Got the back of his head, actually, yeah. but not even looking. Going for kind of the no-look shot there. <laughs> so Ontario now with four scoring opportunities. They've put two on net. Weaver 
Cooper plays it out of the air off of his dome. Kept in bounds here by Ontario. Trying to trigger an attack. Heavy first touch here by Gage. And now here's a blast off from way downtown. And it's another nice save here from the truckers. Big rip right there too from the Warriors. Off the left foot. Goalkeeper there to save the day for Norwalk. Warriors trying to control through the midfield here now with McGinty. Turning it upfield, lays it to the outside. Cleared out of there by Norwalk. Chases Carter back. Gets it to Omar. A couple of nice passes for Ontario here. Going to get them into the attacking third. Trying to find Gage Weaver back to the goal now. So the Warriors got the goal surrounded. But Norwalk doing their thing. As that one's bent and back post. And there's a big goal in the first of the match. Gage Weaver charging in on the backside. Monster goal and big momentum here for the Warriors. Who else would it be, Brian, but Gage Weaver to get it done for Ontario in a big moment too. And they need him to play well. And of course, he's going to deliver. Tremendous pass, able to get the left foot on it. Goalkeeper couldn't stand a chance as Ontario goes up here. Just about 15 minutes in. Gage Weaver capitalizes. Brandon Literal with his 12th dime of the season. Check this one out. That's beautiful. Had some excellent curve on it. And Weaver doing what he does best, just having a nose for the goal. Ball sent to the middle of the park, and it's Ontario waiting on it on the other end. Colahan just hasn't had teammates really funneling forward for him when he's had it on the wing. Meanwhile, Ontario controlling a lot of the action. Pace of play being dictated by the kids in black. Though that one runs out of bounds for another goal kick. Nice move. Get it up top for Cameron Shoup. Nothing has been able to get past Carter Weaver in this back line, though, for the Warriors. Really been sharp early on in this match. There's big brother Gage shooting it forward. Another opportunity here. Nobody making a run, though, for Fulmer on that backside. Played a pretty decent ball to the back post and had the goalie out of position. Just no teammates available. Let's pick up the phone on the other end. Ontario scored on a you know similar situation like that where they were able to you know find Weaver in the box. They're going to try to feed him you know with passes and with opportunities to score. Already cashed in on one and if you're Norwalk, I mean. I think time possession favors Ontario here early in this one. About halfway through this first half, and the Warriors' offense has been, I would say, in control, at least so far. Yeah, they've had the time of possession probably at least 70% so far. Keeping the ball down at this end, and then defensively, Carter doing a nice job of 
cleaning up messes when they make them down into his territory. I bet it's probably interesting. Both, both Ontario and Lexington, of course, they play on natural grass surfaces for their home matches. So with the tournament played almost exclusively on turf, obviously they, uh, they're doing fine with it. They make the adjustments. I really think it bodes Lexington perfectly. Yeah. Like, I, th I think it, that's a big advantage in them. A lot of contact, too, on that far sideline. It's going to be a foul against the Warriors, I believe. Yeah, no question about it. Norwalk wanted to pop up and kind of have a quick initial restart. Coaching staff told them, hey, slow it down. Let's get some guys moving forward. And here comes Corbin Kolsch. It's going to be short. Played by Gage, or actually by Carter, to Gage, and here comes Carter making a run now. And this is where he can be dangerous. He's got five goals on the season from his sweeper position. Headed out of there by Braden DeMuth. And the truckers, they've been solid so far here defensively in the early going, minus the one big shot from Gage. They're not used to allowing any of those goals here. Brian thought the entirety of the match, but let alone about 15 minutes in, Gage Weaver was able to make a splash as the Warriors up one nothing. Plenty of game, though, left as the you know, Chuggers, they, they can turn this around. Just, uh, I think they got to get a little bit more aggressive offensively. Just at least be able to pa you know, pass a soccer ball around. Haven't been able to really find a lot of teammates is safe here from the keeper. I'd like to see a little bit more aggressiveness in our comments section from you fans out there on the YouTube and the Facebook. Drop us some comments. Tell us how you're taking in the game tonight. Are you at home? You out at a friend's house, maybe hanging out at a restaurant. Are you in the stands and then you're still watching the OH report? <laughs> See that a lot, actually. Kind of surprising. I think people just, uh, they like your silky pipes, G. They, they want to I, guess so. I guess so. I guess so. I haven't seen a comment yet from Linda Mendoza. You out there tonight, Linda? She's got to be. There's no way she's not watching. Great Especially camera storm work, on the Storm. Crew. <laughs> storm on the crew. Phenomenal captures of plays. Did get an opportunity to meet her in person for the first time last week, and it was an extraordinary two minutes of my day, minus all of her Wolverines gear that she was wearing, and yeah. actually has a Michigan-themed truck. That kind of uh, took me off guard, but she's a true dedicated fan. Congratulations to her, and did invite me and the entire crew over for... Uh, just one big day of making uh, tamales at her house. So it, it's a process. Yeah. Take some time. She's a wonderful human being. I hear she makes wonderful tamales. I, I think I have tried them once, but I'd like to be a part of the actual manufacturing right. of the food. That's when it's truly special. I don't I've, cook a lot. I've never had tamales. Yeah, I think we need to change that. Sometime this winter, we'll get a little factory yeah. of tamales in Linda Mendoza's kitchen. It's going to be a hard foul. Grabbing for that right ankle here is Drew Thomas. And it doesn't look like he's really trying to sell it at this point. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it got like stepped on. Those are the worst too. Yeah, even with the shin guards on, it still sucks. It yeah. still hurts. Oh, that one sneaks through. Almost a big opportunity. Weaver, though, perfect placement as he has been throughout the bulk majority of the night. This one was deadly. Look at that. Takes the perfect hop. Just squeaks away, and Carter able to get it out of there before Kolsch can get a big shot on net. Big missed opportunity right there for the truckers. Agreed. I think they took maybe one touch too many. Could have tried, probably tried to fire it as soon as they were able to have the you know the chance. But Weaver able to come in and sweep things away, get it get it back out to his guys. Is now 
Ontario trying to get on the attack here. Yeah, a little back and forth action going. James Stewart finally collecting. Gets it up top for Gage. Now he's looking to go one-on-one. -on -one, makes the move. Touch line. Set it up for a second goal of the night. This time Weaver with the assist as he sets up Brandon Literal. So it's reverse from the first goal. Somehow, some way, Weaver was able to sneak that ball underneath everybody and Literal able to cash in as Ontario up to nothing here with 18.05 remaining in this first half. Beautiful placement and the Warriors here go up to nothing. The poise that time of Gage Weaver once he got in the box, taking his time, didn't get tempted by taking the big shot, allowed a couple of his friends to get involved in the mix, and then this, just an excellent pass in traffic. The one-timer, Saucy. Huge start here for Ontario against this Norwalk defensive unit. Yeah. As mentioned, no team all year has allowed or scored two or more goals on them, except for Ontario. They're the lone one. Trying to do that again here tonight is already a 2-0 advantage and a long way to go. They've got a six shots to two advantage in the contest. But they are truly dictating where this game is being played right now. Ontario's in total control, G. Yeah, Norwalk, we've seen the, the missed uh, opportunity that they had with the you know, tremendous free kick that bounced right into the lap, and they weren't able to do anything with it. Other than that, Ontario has been in you know, full, full control of the time of possession, and they've got solid shots off of it. Gage Weaver, whether he's creating for you know, his teammate or he's able to score it himself, he's had a big Im impact with his goal and his assist. And, of course, Brandon Literal, the exact opposite. He's doing the same thing that, that uh, Weaver's doing. He's got assist and a goal as well as Ontario. You know, they're working the ball around to their teammates. They're finding open guys, and they're able to do damage as Weaver. He uncorks one here. But this one isn't going to count for anything. Brian Sills over top. Goes right through the uprights, actually. Oh, I actually missed. A little wide left. Or wide right, a little Blair, Blair Walsh action. So the Warriors living down here at this end of the field. Norwalk struggling to just get control here in the midfield. I think this is the proper play. Try to work it through the wings. That's where they've got some of their best playmakers. But it's been that pass so far, G. I think they've tried it three times. Have not been able to get it dialed in just yet. Dom wants some, some love for some defensive players out here. I, I don't feel like we're giving um, adequate love. I mentioned Carter Weaver's name quite a bit. Dude's doing his thing. Here's Walters. Now for Brandon in the corner. Had that one scored away from him. Now the truckers got a counterattack formulating, or they did. Nice step up that time by the outside backer. And a quick substitution being made here by Norwalk. So they get Zade Oglesby into the mix for the first time tonight. I think we see a little bit more fanfare here, Brian, in the second match. Truckers on that far sideline. They got a little bit more, you know, fans than the the previous match did. Ontario, they're filling yeah, up this I'm top section up here. I, I haven't seen like a like a student section or anything yet, but I think uh, I think we'll definitely see one on Thursday, regardless of which team's there. And yeah, we're gonna take a look here at the fan section that's formed here for Ontario. There they are. Good look overhead from. Just below us, nice set of healthy heads of hair. How often do you shampoo every week? Is it an everyday process? Every time I shower, yeah. Every time you shampoo. Yeah. 
See, I only do it every other because I like to have my own unique, I guess, greasiness to my hair. Kind of form the shape of my head. And I, I try not to use too much product. Uh, it just feels sticky. I don't uh, There's some times I'm like, maybe, because you're not supposed to every time, correct? Or is that conditioner? I, I don't use conditioner really at all. That's like a once a month, just when I'm like, you know what, I, I just kind of want to smell fresh today. Yeah. Let's see what the wife's got uh, hanging out in the old pantry here. It really depends how long my hair is. Yeah, you got a pretty like, short buzz. Right now I got, like, it's like buzz, so I, I really don't, you know, shampoo a lot when I do, but when my hair is longer, I have to condition it. Now, do you have a go-to? Do you use the same, like, products, or do you kind of switch that up in the shower? No, it's just whatever. Whatever mom comes <laughs> yeah, home with. Yeah, whatever mom comes home with. Yeah. Or, if, you know, if I go out, it's it's typically, I hate to admit it, the old three-in-one. Yeah, just get the job done. <laughs> it's just, just got to buy one, ain't going to worry about it, so. Wise move. You can see, yeah, plenty of lettuce out there on the soccer pitch tonight. Not as much as we saw in the first match. A lot of nice heads of hair out there. For me, I got some Pantene Pro V that I've been rocking. Did did shampoo today. Looks great. Thank you. Yeah. Take a lot of pride in having uh, TV quality hair. It's not for everybody. It takes time. It's a process. Here is our fan zone. Say what's up to Greg, Samantha, cheering on Norwalk out there tonight. Don, could we mention Ontario's defensive men once in a while? We'll get to them. Another SBC fan. How we doing out there, Kim? And now back to Greg. So we need to hear more from you, the fans. Get in the game. Drop us some comments. So there's a lot of intelligent fans out there. We've seen from time to time on some of our broadcasts, they'll hit us with some fun terms or techniques or uh, definitely in volleyball for all, all of us yeah. schlubs out there that we're, we're pretending like we know the game. And we, we've le learned a lot from our fan base, I think, this year. Yeah, we got to give a lot, a lot of kudos. You know, so those guys out there lot watching and hitting us in the fan zone. Love you guys. So this is where the game's being won right now for Ontario here in the midfield. Definitely being very aggressive. Got some extra pep. Making the most of their minutes while these kids are in here. But this is where Norwalk, this is kind of the empty spot on the field from the wing. And they're able to get it to the middle now with Shoop. Not that time. Abdelaziz waiting for it on the other end. I think a big key for the truckers to go into halftime will be to, you know, find their offense. They haven't been able to do much, you know, when they when they get it across that midfield line. And even that, be able to you know, knock one of these through the pipes and just go in the half down one. Just kind of like same story as it was Lexington versus, uh, you know, Perkins in the game before. We kind of just it spiraled out of control. You don't want that to happen before the half. So you get, I think the the last five minutes is going to play, key, you know, crucial throughout the entirety of this game, especially in this first half. We're down to just over 10 on our Avita Work Well scoreboard. As we've got a big punt, one out of the air here by the Warriors off the noggin of Caleb Barabani. And for the truckers, I think they just got to get some lucky hops. Try to get around Carter Weaver. But this dude is like a steel trap, brick wall. Hard to sneak anything by him. That one from distance. Sent a bit wide. This one from you know, way downtown considering the angle. I never mind those, just always more beneficial if you can keep them down, strike it. Anything can happen if the keeper has to come into the equation. Sometimes they'll spill it out and you'll be there for a good rebound. So 
taking those big shots from outside, depending on the situation. Typically, usually a fan. That's shot number eight now for Ontario. Four of them have been on frame. Good looking ball. There's the one timer. Weaver was there, but just an athletic play by the keeper. And Ashton comes away with it. And as I continue to learn, Brian, about the beautiful game out here on the, the soccer pitch, I what think my, you learned? My, my, my biggest takeaway is I love when teams take those shots that, you know, maybe some, when some teams other, other teams wouldn't take, mm -hmm. like we've seen, a, you know, just a couple minutes ago. You know, if you think you got an opportunity, let it fly. Maybe the keeper makes a mistake. You know, something happens. Maybe the ball, you know, slips through his fingertips as Norwalk here trying to get an attack going on their side. Oh, what a move! And they pull back with him one. Shoot. There it is. Sweet. What a move he put on the keeper, too, to get this one to go. They needed a big goal right here before the half. And they got one with plenty of time remaining, too, to continue to do some damage. Look at Shoot with the crossover move. <laughs> and then he sneaks it right by the keeper for a goal. Big time move right there from Shoop and company. Big goal as they're down just one now. I think if our good friend Jesse Ryder is watching, he would agree this would be up for his goal of the week. Look at that crossover. And then ices it into the back of the net. Big stuff right there. And short on time, too. Getting them before the break always just seems like it carries a little bit of extra weight. But more importantly for Norwalk, to get that goose egg out of there changes kind of the flow of the game here. I think it gets in the minds, you know, of these Ontario players that Maybe to back off some of the aggressiveness sometimes. Don't take the gamble. You know, don't don't let them get an opportunity. That Norwalk, that is, to have a counter. So we'll see how, how different that makes this game here. Still plenty of time here in this first half for either side to do some damage. We'll see if Gage Weaver can get anything going here. He's going to cross it up. Nice header that time. It's knocked down by Kolsch. And here come the truckers. That one sneaks by. Wrangle on the cred, spinning, dealing. Now Colahan is going to shift it deep down in the corner. Card was there. Uses his body so well. That was a big time turn right there. He made that look too easy. Just great athletes both. He engaged. Phenomenal basketball players, so they know how to shield off defenders. As Ontario picks up their second foul here in the opening half. It's been a really clean game. And uh, the first game we saw uh, multiple fouls on both sides, Brian. Lexington, a very physical team. So far here tonight, haven't seen a lot of free kick opportunities and fouls here on the pitch. Yeah, it was just the second one. Kolsch electing to go with the short touch. But now, the shot from DeMuth, and it's going to be save number four for Abdelaziz. And you can tell how much confidence that goal gave this Norwalk team. It, it, it feels like a completely different game just in the past three minutes. It feels as everything has changed. They got the goal. They got some of that confidence, and they got that goose egg off the board. They ain't got to worry about that no more. Now they can kind of just play loose, play free, and kind of play their style of soccer. Yeah, I agree. Anytime you got the zero up there, you're at risk of getting shut out. Right. It's just an unsettling feeling. It's not cool for anybody. And more importantly, pulling with him one. So now you're just one shot away from producing an equalizer. And it's got a little spark, some pep right now on the step here of the truckers who were getting owned early on in the contest. Now, all of a sudden, starting to come alive. As a whistle finally comes in and will go against Carter Weaver. I think they allowed it to play out. I think I think that's where it was. And then they just wanted to see if it would kind of shut down the advancement of play. It did. So another big try here for Norwalk as we're sub five minutes to go. 
We've seen the last time they had a free kick opportunity like this. They're able to get a great bounce and almost have a play right at the goal. See what happens here. Excellent setup. Mason Gamble elevated. Got a big piece of it off the forehead. He just couldn't lay it down and keep it on frame. That's well struck, though. And they're winning these free kick opportunities are. Norwalk is. I mean, they've had great chances, great looks. That time, almost another, you know, chance to, to get in the back of the net. Header opportunity just sailed a little bit over top. Different game here, past five minutes. Let's see who wins the 50-50 ball, collects possession. It's going to be Weaver. Nice decision to play it out wide here for Jace Young. I think he tried to force it a little bit there in the middle, but it might work out. Weaver, the big stick of the keeper. Still down on the field, Jose Negret. Nothing malicious there. Gage is trying to make a play. Yeah. Definitely warrants the foul, I mean, right. no question. Comes to a point, you know, where the train's going to have to, you know, come to a stop at one point. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Weaver, keeper was in the way. There's nowhere else to go. So we'll see him get up after this and recoup. Yes. That was really the first opportunity Ontario's had, you in know, deep, deep in the territory in the last, like, five, six minutes. Absolutely. Off the restart, the punt one out of the air by the Warriors. But now blasted, back and forth we go. A little jousting match. And it leaks forward. Here's Gage, big opportunity. As he turns towards net, back post, lobbed up, almost an own goal. My lord. Look at Kolsch's face. He knew it. Crisis averted, too. Oh, so close. Not sure if Gage was going to set up a teammate there or if he was ripping that. I think a little combo, yeah. a little combo play. Whichever one worked was going to be the, the what, what exactly he decided to do. Here's McGinty. Lobs it in near post. Headed down. Knocked out of there by Kolsch. And the second one, one-handed snag. Jose. Sticking that paw out there like OBJ. Boom. And then this is the nice one. Wow. Oof. Four save here in this opening half by Negret. That one the most valuable, as that would have been with about two minutes, 40 seconds. That, that could have been a killer. Yeah, that kind of could have, that would have wiped everything that they've just, you know, earned in the, in the past eight minutes. And they got their confidence back. They kind of got that swagger, that swagger back. Big time so save right there from the keeper with the left hand. And keeps it just a one score game. Yes, the play of the match, I think, so far up to this point, and we've seen some pretty big moments. But they're keeping it just a one-goal game here for the Truckers. Pretty big, and looking for an equalizer down here at this end. Almost had that one working with Gage. Nice reversal here for the Warriors. Uh, but a bad giveaway. Ends up here with Colahan. Chucker's got to turn around and go backwards. Looking to attack the soft spot of the D. It's here in the middle right now for Rangel Negret. Can't deliver on target. Kind of had to force one, this one up. Ontario is beginning to swarm all over. Had to let it fly and sailed wide. Now 50 seconds remain here in this first half. Ontario started out with that big 2 nothing lead. And then past 10 minutes, it's really been all Norwalk other than a couple shots on goal from the Warriors. Looking to turn the tide here. Short time down to about 30 seconds left. Keeper out of position. Won't hurt him. Warriors got a chance here for a corner kick to set up a set piece. Have to get to work quickly. Let's go with the short. 
had Weaver in the box. Carter, that is. And now a whistle. Going to set up a set piece here for the Warriors. What can they do with it? Stort just going to blast it through the goal post, and that's going to take us to the end of an exciting opening half. Ontario had a two goals to none lead. Norwalk trimmed the deficit in half as we are at the break. Stick around for our halftime report. We'll have some stats analysis and more. Get you ready for half number two. It's live and free and exclusive in the OH Report. We'll be back. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. time 
here at Clyde High School. The second half of our doubleheader sees Ontario on top here at the break. 2-1 over Norwalk, the number two seed on top of the number three. I'm Brian Skronsky, Garrett Parlett's with me, and this is the Sutton Bank Halftime Report. Why don't you get checking the pace with Kasasa? I just like saying it, G. It's almost worth it to get the Kasasa just so you can say that you have Kasasa. I honestly don't know if I ever get to say Kasasa. That's like my first time ever seeing Kasasa. And you smiled. I smiled. It felt good. You made me smile. I feel good now. All right. Who should feel good about their first half performance? Who, who would you feel better about? Ontario obviously has the lead right now, but Norwalk started to turn things up at the end. I think the momentum is on Norwalk's side for sure. Um, I kind of agree. I think in that last 10 minutes, they, they I feel like the game completely switched. I feel like it was two different teams from the first 30 minutes that we've seen, you know, Gage Weaver and, and, and Literal were able to, you know, get the get the ship moving for the Warriors. They start out 2 nothing, but then once Norwalk finally got that goal, about eight minutes remaining, I thought it was a completely different game. Ontario still was able, you know, in, in the later stages, get a couple shots, but it just felt like Norwalk, they had the control, they, they had some confidence, they had some momentum. So I'm curious how Ontario is going to respond coming out of here and see if maybe Norwalk can get back on the board, tie this game up, and we'll see what happens then. Let's take a look at the first half stats presented by Sutton Bank. And pretty even across the board. Ten shots for Ontario. They were able to put seven on frame. They definitely controlled a lot of the action in the first 30 minutes of the match. But Norwalk started to take control of the pace over the final ten. That's where they got the big goal to make it two to one from Shoop. And that is where we are at this point, G's. So... Things started to shift, as you alluded to, on a beautiful night here in Clyde, lighting up the sky and beautiful new LED lights put on that flyer out there. It's impressive. This is a cool stadium, but that, I mean, that accent piece, come on, man. That's that's next level. Yeah, that, that's the big thing up here. I don't, I'm trying to think of a school that has uh, something like that, like a mascot that's kind of, I don't think there is. Not that, at least not that I can think of right now, so. You know, that's what makes them so, you know, you know, unique. I like the feel, too. I, I, lo I love the, the logo in the middle. Yeah. The big, the big you know, plane. So it's a, it's a unique, unique environment, to say the least. We saw the earlier kind of matinee game. That was at 5 Lexington versus Perkins. And it was a gorgeous night. Kind of got a little dark now. So the kind of the, the fall colors you don't really see as often. But it was a beautiful, you know, you know night for some soccer here. Temperature starting to dip just a little bit now. Things starting to cool off. Slight breeze coming into the stadium. And a huge second half coming up for both of these squads. If you're Ontario, got to feel good about having the cushion here on top, two to one. And the creativity that they've been able to display offensively tonight. It's been fun definitely to see Brandon Literal and kind of how he – has a good sense for where Gage Weaver is going to be and vice versa. Those two have really played well off of one another. And then on the back line, Carter Weaver, guy's been an animal. I've been very impressed with him. He's he's done his job phenomenally. Uh, on the other side, going head-to-head -head with the likes of Corbin Kolsch in that Norwalk defense who so vaunted, so great for the bulk majority of the season, holding most of their opponents to one goal or less. So I think we're in for a fun finish here tonight. And a lot of the, you know, defense so far, as you mentioned it, Brian's been Carter Weaver really stopping guys in the tracks when Norwalk's able to get on that counter attack and kind of, you know, steal the ball, make them turn it over, make them make a bad decision, bad pass, whatever it is. Weaver's usually been around the ball, whoever it is, and vice versa with the other Weaver, Gage. He's doing the offensive attack for the Warriors. He's getting it to, to Brandon Literal. And literals getting it to him. I mean, it's been it's been an onslaught from those two as a dynamic duo. Both got an assist and a goal here tonight. That's a big reason why they're still sitting at two one. Things started to shift in the late in the late stages of that first half, but still got that two one cushion here. Still got that one goal lead. So we'll see how they respond coming out here out of the break. Just a friendly little reminder to let you know that we have another live stream going down right now on the OH Report. If you want to check in at some point and see the Colonel Crawford Lady Eagles going head-to-head -head with the Galleon Lady Tigers on the volleyball floor. And right now it's Colonel Crawford with a 13-9 advantage. Eagles looking to move on to the district championship match. 
for the first time in a long time. What a win that would be over Galleon. I see a lot of people watching on our Facebook page, too. But not to scare you away, I mean, definitely keep it, keep it here. Hang out with me and G for the rest of the night while we're having a great time here at Clyde. And love hearing from you, the fans. Keep the comments coming. You see that we'll make you a part of the game. Join our broadcast in the fan zone. I get, I get volleyball tomorrow, Brian, so I'll save my... Uh... I'll save my viable expertise for tomorrow with Travis. No need to waste it now. Yeah. I'm sure he'll get he'll get me right. That Big Mac Trav, he's really taken a liking to volleyball these last couple of seasons. We didn't do it a ton in our first initial year of live streaming back in 2020, but now that I mean we got volleyball like almost every day, <laughs> it yeah. seems like. And I, I got to give him some love. He's really taking the initiative to learn the game, understand it a lot better, and uh, he looks forward to it. I, I appreciate that about Trev. I learn something new about that game every time I'm out with him, regardless of what it is, whether it's right or wrong. Now, usually, you know, you know how Trav is. I, I do. <laughs> My biggest call. <laughs> My biggest thing about, you know, out being out there with Travis is the yummy ball factor. And I'm still trying to learn what that is, but I'm super excited about that tomorrow. So, but right now we got soccer. And this, uh, this is kind of one of my favorite sports, definitely, to call and to cover. Big fan of the beautiful game, and especially in tournament time. It just seems like the physicality gets to a new level, and the winner go home aspect of all sports, it's something very special. Yeah, it makes the competition level, you know, amp up, you know, not a quite a bit. But it's a lot. It's a lot different out there, you know, in postseason play, regardless of any sport. But here out in soccer, too, th things can change in such a hurry. On a counterattack, you could lose your entire season just gone in an instant. So that's why uh, both, both teams are fighting here tonight as Ontario still holds that slim 2-1 advantage as both teams will flip sides here and attack the Opposite goal that they were here in the first half. Let's see if Norwalk can maybe get some of that Ontario magic here on the far end. And they'll have the first touch here of half number two. We are underway. Winner going to move on and take on Lexington for the district championship. Minutemen, a 4-1 winner over Sandusky Perkins. Just about an hour ago here at Clyde. They'll be looking to get back to the round of regionals yet again. I believe for the sixth straight year, that's what the Minutemen are playing for. Unless one of these teams can stop them from accomplishing that feat. A real quick recap of how we got to where we are right now in terms of the score. Had Gage Weaver. Make it 1-0 at the 25-52 mark with Literal setting him up, who then later scored about seven and a half minutes later to make it 2-0 in favor of the Warriors. And then Shoop with just a phenomenal individual effort. Pulled Norwalk within 2-1 at the eight-minute mark as we've got a foul here against the Truckers. Setting up the Warriors. With James Stewart on the ball. Stewart is such a great distributor. 21 assists on the season. I mean, that's Depper Schmidt numbers right there. Couldn't find a teammate, though. It will be knocked out of bounds, and James will trot up and handle the corner kick duties. Warriors had a three of these in the first half. Stewart, definitely one of those guys, he, he can trigger it in and you can run just about anything. Can come near post, far post, put some trajectory on it, drive it in. And he'll come near post with this one. Still up for grabs. Heavy touch there off the left foot there of Rui. Truckers can't clear as Saltzgiver comes up to handle. Flipping the field, going back up top. Off the giveaway. Let's see if we can get a counterattack here from the Chuckers. We will not. There's Weaver starting to make a run. 
Carter wanting to get involved offensively, so does put him out of position here. Well, that's what Norwalk is able to do so well in the late stages of that first half was that counterattack. They had great opportunities, and also on some of their free kick chances, they were able to get it into the box and get great looks. This one a bit far away from that goal, but we've seen their, their opportunities – Let's see if they can continue to do it, you know, do a better job here in the second half of setting up some teammates, you know, controlling some time of possession, and also being a, you know, set up opportunities for goals. Still down 2-1 here, Ontario. And trying to stop this attack here from Norwalk. Let's see if the truckers can get something going here. That's Carter Weaver stepping into the ball, and he wanted to again try to get out, initiate a counterattack. Wonder if that was a point of emphasis from head coach Chris McLenathan at the break. Good looking ball here, shot down the near side. And diving to collect it is Negret. Got a good beat off of that. Another ball down in the corner. Let's see if we get a cross coming in here from Walters. And said it's near post and gobbled up again by Jose. Go down as the first shot here of half number two on either side. Just over four minutes here into the action. Love the thought process there. Trying to get Dominguez on the run. Truckers working around here on this near side. They give it away, though, in the midfield. Evan Rui coming up with the turnover. Big run being made down in the corner now by Fulmer. And he doesn't quite have the speed to get there on time. Then takes a seat. It's a quick break. <laughs> Took a tumble out there, Brian. I told you, that surface out there gets pretty slick. You know, when you run off that turf and then onto that you know, mad out there. You know, I, I don't fall like that myself back when I was in high school, except I was on concrete in front of the entire band. Flipped upside down. It's kind of scorpion-like. Wow. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was quite the embarrassment. I, I remember that to this day. And I'm sure a lot of the band members, they've taken that memory, <laughs> they've etched it in the back of their right. brains, and it probably comes up every time they get together. Remember I'm the time, number 70 on the football team? <laughs> both back legs, too, underneath me. Did the it was quite the scene. toss. Oh, man. Walters lays it off here for Literal. Oh, great looking feed. Now they've got Weaver had his back to the goal. Turned into some trouble. Big collision. They're going to say play on here for the truckers who have the advantage. Now the late whistle comes in. You saw the foul there on the Mechanics Bank replay. Fifth foul issued against the Warriors. Ball popped way up. That had like four seconds of hang time. It's like a punt. Off the giveaway, we'll see what Ontario is able to turn this into. Got Weaver working here on the near side wing. He's got great speed. Back and forth we go. That last connecting pass just getting disrupted by the back lines of both defensive units. Now Shoop with the giveaway, gets it back. He's trying to make a run. It's kind of the same story it was in the first part of that first half, Brian, where Ontario had a lot of control, you know, of the ball. 
took them a couple minutes to kind of get their stride and find some great looks is now applying more pressures. Gage Weaver here. Let's see what he can do with the rock in his hands. Put a move on. Yeah, it's interesting to say it like that, rock in his hands, when you're actually only allowed to touch it with your feet. He almost drills one. Still up for grabs, though. And now the truckers are going to get it out of there. We've seen that multiple times tonight from Weaver. And that's what you're supposed to do. Just send it back post. A lot of good things can happen if you keep it on frame. As there's a big foul from Carter Weaver just outside the box. Free kick on the way here for Norwalk. What a big change of events on the counterattack. And this is just all set up by Omar Dominguez. It was able to sneak that right foot around him, get a touch, take it away from Carter, put him in an uncomfortable position. And now here's a huge moment in the match. Yeah, and they have to capitalize on this. You get you get chances like this against a team like Ontario. You have to cash in. Let's see if they can do so here. Haven't had a shot yet in the second half. We'll see if Shoup, who's got the only goal so far for Norwalk, Alexa try to send it on frame. Five-man wall standing in his way. And he's got Rangel Negret, who makes a run. Warriors ping it out of there. Chuckers will have another chance at a set piece. Take one more look. Just using your head. That's all that was there for the Ontario D. Here's Rangel Negret. Drives it in, back post, headed out of there by the Warriors. And we're going to get a substitution, kind of wholesale style here for Ontario as they're sending three new fresh bodies into the mix. And the Warriors evade big scoring chance. A couple of them here for Norwalk. Kudos to the Warrior D. Holding firm. A couple big chances, too, for Norwalk there. Had the free kick, and then, of course, the corner. Neither able to capitalize, but tremendous move here on the outside. Dancing with a little bit. Norwalk, though, losing their footing just outside the box. Off the turnover, big ball sent through. Weaver was hoping that it would somehow skip its way. Now it will find its way to the feet of Gage. Sends it out wide here for McGinty. Don't have great flow here from either offense yet in this second half as we're about a dozen minutes in and another big collision out there. Doesn't earn a whistle this time. And I don't think we will here either. Some nice tackles going down back and forth. Yeah, you can tell the physicality here, Brian, and frustrations ramped up quite a bit here. Both sides, you know, getting into it. Great tackles from both sides, but you can tell there's some grabbing out there. There's some shoving. Refs letting play on. I think he should, too, here in tournament play. Definitely a much different feeling half here than what we saw through the first 40 minutes. See McGinty lowering the shoulder, dishing out a little bit of boom. But he lost the handle. Neither offensive unit. Able to really connect a couple, two, three passes together and get into the attacking third with consistency. Let's see, we're diving back into the fan zone here. See somebody saying, maybe watching from the sideline, don't sub me in, coach. Ava McAdams, go flashes. Okay. Hey, a lot of love. 
for the flashes out there. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I mean, they're they're an SBC school, so we'll take all the fans we can get on our broadcast. We, we we don't discriminate. You don't have to be a fan of Ontario or the Truckers to be watching tonight. I just ask that you pick a side. That's all. Big charge near post. You see a conversation now going down out there with Fulmer along with Gage. Uh, Gage would have loved that one to be sent back post because that's why he's there. That's what he's saying, man. Just, just give me a chance. That's all I'm asking for. Didn't agree too with Gage in that, in that instance. You know, give him a chance. He's got 37 goals, you know, you know, on the year for a reason. Give your best player in space a chance right there in a big-time moment, too. Going up 3-1 would be pivotal here. There's a, time's not a factor right now, but it will here in just a short couple of minutes. Probably about 10-15 to be exact. But Ontario's offense is, uh, so far, both sides. It has been inconsistent here in the second half. Neither side able to get... Too many great shots. Ontario, I think, his offense has been better. But not enough to, to really, you know, hang your hat on so far. Warriors have three shots. The Norwalks one. Nothing on net, though, at either end of the field here in half number two. And it's just the continuity offensively. The last shot from Ontario, about the best that we've seen so far. And in the beautiful game, boy, do you have to capitalize when you've got big-time opportunities. See it time and again in tournament play. It's not always the team that produces the most offense that ends up winning the match. It's those who are able to smash them in when they get their looks. Just so many turnovers right now. And I, I think that there has to be a little bit of a frustration factor for both of these offenses, and that's probably why the physicality is raised. Yeah. And credit both defenses, those back lines. Well, Delacy's had to come out and save the day. Could have been trouble right there. Ooh, that was trouble for Ontario. See, Omar, he, he's clear back. On the line, kind of gives gives a look out <laughs> like, jeez, buddy, come on, Will. Gamble has to come right back to him, but it's punched away. Two on three here for the Warriors. What can Gage Weaver do with it? He's gonna play a deep ball out for Fulmer. He's got a lot of speed on the wing. Big shot deflected. And we've got a Warrior down on the field. I believe that's McGinty. Got hit in the face, was grabbing an eye. So a whistle will stop play here. 23-49 showing, and McGinty's still down now. It looks like, I'm not really sure. Grabbed a side. Seemed favoring a leg. Maybe, maybe it was just bad all the way around. Uh, initially, I, I did think that he got hit in the face. Maybe that's still the case. Take another look on the replay. Mm, yeah, maybe head to head. It's a big time collision right there. Yeah, th those are scary ones. Yeah. Anytime you get your bell rung, because unlike football, I mean, there's no helmet right. out here. So th that's just your dome and then the other kid's head and. A lot of opportunities to get your bell rung. I like that there's a lot more of an emphasis now on the, making sure that before they return to the field of play, that kids got their head right. And I see we got a mini wave going on on the far side of the field. Kind of tell from here. Yeah, there it goes. Norwalk fans starting to get into it. That's what it's all about. You know, beautiful night. Don't, oh, we're going to do our own wave in here. Here we go. Get on the press box. Guys. Hey. 
Not going to be outdone by the Truckers fans. Not tonight, guys. Late whistle is going to come in and stop this opportunity. Look like Dominguez. Might have got a little jersey tuck. Come away with the ball. Here comes Stort, left foot, big ball, drifting into the hands of the keeper. Got every inch of that one. It's kind of a tale between two different play styles, between you know the game we've seen earlier, Brian, and now these two teams out on the pitch. It seems that it takes a little bit more passing, a little bit more methodical. It seems that Lexington can they, you know they can snap it in an instant. So whoever wins this one's gonna have to. I mean, to step up to that kind of speed that Lexington does, but great passing here from the truckers on this run. Weaving through traffic was Wangle Negret. Had to dish it off. Now they set it up to Minguez. And they're going to issue this a corner kick. Deflected that time off of Will Saltzgiver. I believe they just gave Gage Weaver a card, Brian. So that means the Gage is going to have to check out of the contest here for a minute. There goes Gage. I was jotting down some notes. I was not paying attention. Do you have something uh, to say to the official? I, I believe he just said something to the official. I don't think it was any sort of action or anything. So K.J. Odin is going to get his opportunity. We'll see the sophomore for the first time here in this contest. Chuckers got the goalie marked five right inside of the net. Poked out of there by Saltzgiver, at least for now. Now the Warriors will clear. Here is the freshly checked in K.J. Odom. Exciting young player and should have a, a lot to give here. Ask him to go 110% when he's getting these select minutes. Big ball in the middle of the park, but it's off the chest that time though of Dominguez. And just nothing really materializing right now offensively. Sick turn, though. And literal just playing it out in space. Didn't have anybody making a run. See if the truckers can get some going with their offense here in the second half. Really, neither offense has been able to get going at a high rate, but I think Ontario's been playing a little bit better, not turning over as much. And now with Weaver out of the game. Let's see maybe where the offense comes from, from the Warriors. They'll at least get an opportunity set piece on the way here. Whistle going against the Muth. And we know the Stort can definitely lace into it, get a reasonable shot from here. And that's exactly what he's going to do, a missile. Whew. Could feel the heat off that ball from up here. Kind of velocity and spin on this puppy. <laughs> My goodness. Well struck that time. Results in a great opportunity for Ontario now with the corner kick and Weaver checking right back in the game. Don't expect him to take too long to go to call his number once again. Yeah, both he and Carter running in. Here's Gage. And Jose Lems, no, nah, not on my watch, big dog. One more, look at that rocket, man. Probably got to hurt Jose's hand to make that save. Surprised he had enough reaction time to be able to see that ball even coming in. He's got eight saves so far in the contest, four of those coming here in half number two. Nice.
Nice turn. Big carry here from Salt Skiver. Ontario got guys spread out all over the park. Seems as when I, you know, Ontario's a little bit more, a little bit more careful with the soccer ball. When you know when they're when they're passing and finding teammates, Norwalk can you know get a little flustered, get a little overwhelmed at times when some Ontario defenders, you know, get physical. Nice battle going on the far side. Little whirly bird action though then there from Fulmer. And Stort this time off target. But he's got the green light pretty much anywhere from 40 yards in. Could have made that field goal from about 60 yards out, Brian. Browns could have used one of those yesterday. Could have used a lot of things. So many bad feelings come bubbling up, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mondays are tough. I shouldn't I shouldn't have. Let me reel it back in. Let's get back to some football. Some football. Dang it. See what I did now? I just just stuck in my own brain. This is gonna be a Norwalk foul here. Their third of the second half. Be a good angle for Stewart. Try to put this up for a header. Seven Warriors all lined up outside of the 10 yard mark. Weaver almost got a piece of it. Past the midway point of the second half, 17 minutes and change remaining. No scoring coming here in these first 23 minutes of the second. So the Avita work well scoreboard. Just kind of sitting stagnant for now. Still plenty of time here for, for Norwalk to get back into this and tie this thing up, but Ontario's been controlling time of possession in the last couple of minutes pretty strong. So let's see if they can get a counter here. Use their opportunity to do so. Nice move by Cullahan. Takes it in the middle. Gets it off for shoot. Warriors shut it down. Any goal on either side. So huge. Truckers. Of course, just one big play away from tying things up. And if we can get a two-goal advantage for the Warriors, that'd be tough to overcome in these late stages. Big collision here on the near side. Eric Rangel and Negret, check this out. Boom, just blast literal in the back. And he's up a little bit hobbled. And I think we got a card. Literal had a great... Takeaway too. A little bit of frustration there from the truckers. Now sets up Ontario here with the chance to do something. 16 minutes remain here in this second half. So, Brian, I know it's still pretty early here for Norwalk to get back into this game, but when do you start hitting the, maybe the panic button? Maybe like two, two, three minutes, or is that, is that too late? Yeah, to go full panic mode, I, I'd say you, you don't want to do it too early. I would say, you know, sub three minutes. That's, that's when you start maybe taking an extra defender, putting them up top, having some midfielders advancing up a little bit and leaving yourself exposed for a right. counterattack. But at the same time, it gives you more opportunities moving forward and it'd be up to Ontario to try to adjust as Weaver drops down. Looks like he's going to be okay. Initially, it's someone like grabbing for his groin area. That always is, Those are tough injuries to overcome. I think he took a knee right to the thigh when he went to try to steal that ball. Now an Ontario foul. 
They've had seven whistles go against them here tonight. And I think this is a key moment right here for Norwalk. Even if you don't set anything up for a big shot, just try to keep it down at this end. You got numbers forward now, just playing with two guys back at midfield. This is a big chance for them. It's a great ball. And it's headed in. Oh, and Delazis drops down, makes two saves. And a wild flurry in front of the net. Ends up with the Warriors. Staving off danger. Whoa. Incredible play right here from the keeper from Ontario. Somehow, someway sliding to One, able to get a pull two. on it. Two big saves. We're going to give him two and a half. I'm marking that down as an official half save there by Omar. Let's see. There's definitely one. That was outstanding. The second one, twice as good. And then he lets him know it, too. I like that. Got to get into the ear of your opponent from time to time and let him know. I Obviously, those are the best opportunities for Norwalk here in the second half. Two of their three shots coming right there. I think that, that, that could give them some confidence like that goal did in the first half. Let's see how they do. Did you see the physical play here? It has ramped up even more now that you know time beginning to become a factor. Just 13.42 remaining here in the second half. I think this is how you have to play Ontario. If you don't step up and bring a little bit of physicality of your own, they've got some big, strong athletes that they're able to send up in the offensive side of things. So Norwalk's kind of adjusted to that, I think, here in the second half. Going more toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nose to nose as that's a well-struck bending back post. And a huge clear. These are the balls that I think that Norwalk can really benefit from. I like those big exploding balls, just to send it to the other end and allow guys like Spencer to just try to go make a play on it. Literal out for Fulmer. Turns it back inside, sets it up. Gage tried to lay it down at his feet for a shot. Couldn't get one off. Defense has to step up big here for Norwalk. Don't allow Ontario to get, you know, a, a goal here. It almost puts the game away unless you're able to get some offense going in the late stages. Defense has got to hold tough, and you got to be able to get some great counters off of it. As here could be a chance, but keeper comes off his line and saves that one. Jose's been pretty sharp here tonight. Three straight headers there. Let's see who will end up winning possession. Looks like it's going to be. Norwalk has had such a struggle trying to complete it. That one spinning could mean trouble here. Colahan keeping after it. But Abdelaziz calmly taking his time. And a lot of Norwalk fans feel like Ontario last touched it with their feet and that Omar shouldn't be allowed to come snatch it up with his fingers. But he did. You got to credit the coaching staff from Ontario and McLennathan for how they responded in the second half. I thought Norwalk had all the momentum heading into the break. It's been a struggle for the truckers here, at least offensively. They've had their plethora of opportunities defensively, and they've been able to, you know, keep Ontario at two. But so far the offense here in the second half just hasn't been there for the truckers as Weaver's going to lay this one out. Big charging run, turning inside, Fulmer, too tall. But you look offensively, 
for Norwalk, it, it has been kind of a challenge for them of late. Their last three matches have all been victories, but they all ended with the exact same score, 2-1. to one. So they've been locked up in scores. Well, just like what we're looking at right here, G-Man, this could be a four straight, except for them, they're on the, the bad half of it. And I think that while they score seven goals per contest, it's so misleading because all due respect to the Sandusky Bay Conference, it's one of the worst in the state. And when you're playing the likes of you know, Colombian and, and Clyde and Sandusky, and you're getting wins 15 nothing, 15 nothing, 17 nothing. It just skews all of your numbers, and it, it's tough to get a, a true read on what type of a team it is. This is a quality unit, though, and uh, I feel like a properly seeded at number three. But against the better teams, I mean, you're not going to see the offensive outpouring that they had during their conference play, especially not in tournament. Another whistle, that's number six against Ontario here in the second half. A solid chance here for the Chuckers. they got to capitalize on these free kicks. When they get these opportunities, be able to find somebody, find a teammate, see if they can make something happen here. There's, you know, time now under ten minutes, nine minutes remaining here in this half. That's going to set up Weaver here for Ontario to try to clear this ball. Nice dish to the middle of the field here for Zane. But he runs into some trouble. Could have been dangerous too. If Ontario was able to get that to Weaver. Could have had some space to try to get something to go for the Warriors here in this half. Still scoreless in the second half. Had the two goals in the first half from Lural and Weaver. This will be Jose. Going to go kick out of this. Clock starting to melt away. Eight minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Winner, of course, moving on to take on Lexington, the top seed. It'll be Thursday at 6 p.m. If Norwalk wins, match will be here. If not, not sure exactly, but they'll probably move the game to Richland County. A lot of great soccer venues out there. I'd probably vote for the Colt Corral. They could play it at Clear Fork. Be my choice. This is a great venue, though. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to have two teams right. <laughs> separated by just a few miles, drive all the way up here and play. Nice ball movement here. Some nice poise being showed by Ontario there, not rushing it, though it does roll out of bounds. But it's all about just time of possession here for Ontario. If you can just play keep away from Norwalk, run this baby out, punch your ticket to the next round. Truckers obviously thinking a lot differently. Colahan trying to decide what to do with it. And it's going to be a giveaway. Not a good one either. Now Weaver, good first touch. But Kolsch got a piece of him. Weir's looking to hang on to this slim advantage. Just 6.15 remaining in this contest. And still on the offense attack here. Trying to put it away if they can get a goal here. Go up 3-1, but see if the defense can stand tall for the Norwalk Truckers. Ain't it well on that one. That one gets knocked out of play. So Ontario obviously not going to be in any hurry to get this one set up. Stort walking his way over there. I mean, they'll probably have a good 40 seconds off the clock by the time he strikes this. It's a gamesmanship. Got to be smart. Here comes the senior midfielder. 
headed up. And now kicked out of bounds on the other side. So Stewart going to mosey his way over to the other corner. See how long this takes. It's 520 on the clock when it went out of bounds. Uh, not what you want to be in the situation or walks in right now. You know, they're trying to get a goal of their own, and they're back here defending a couple corner kicks here for Ontario. See if they can get a big defensive stand here and get on a counterattack. There's see some subs check in for both sides. I'll check out Keith. He's watching us on his phone and then got Travis on the big screen at his house. So we'll take the second screen. That's fine. Oh, big shot. I think that was deflected. So bring on the fifth corner kick for Ontario here in the second half. Now, Brian, you begin hitting the button anytime soon here. Is it, is it in you? Is it, it? You're hitting it? Well, you got to get the ball first. Yeah. <laughs> but after... <laughs> Once you get it, that's when, yeah, you start ringing that bell and do anything that you can to try to go serve up some late dinner action. This is about now. Got some numbers moving forward. See three guys spread out across up top. Just playing with two guys back, so... Looks like Norwalk's kind of thinking in the same mode that we are. Good position that time. Weaver was just trying to send it down to the other end, but Ferkel was waiting on it. And here's a good chance here for the Truckers. Can they make something out of it? Trying to shift field here to the middle of the park. Colahan just has not been a difference maker. Not up to his normal standards. Ontario got to do is just try to waste as much time as they can, but got to be careful too. You don't want to get a turnover here and allow an easy runoff for Norwalk. Including with the move. Trying to get it to Colahan. Now Salt's giver putting some pressure on and gets a whistle. Didn't like it. Yeah, it looks like they're they're going all in now, G-Man. The alarms are sounding, Brian. Panic button. I can hear him. And it's been smacked. Jose with kind of a short drive there. And he's out of position. Yeah, your gauge might want to just slap this one towards net. Jose now able to get back into position. So we're closing in on just two minutes remaining. Warriors wisely. I mean, they're just playing kickball now. Trying to keep it down at this end for as many seconds as possible. Could this be the fifth straight year, Brian, where we see a Lexington, Ontario district final? One minute and 30 seconds separates us from that. Yeah, I think the analytics would probably say Ontario's probably 98% chance to win at this point. But with that 2% still hanging out there, Chuckers will have to come up with something huge here in the closing minute. Oh, it's set up. First shot, second shot, no way. They come through with the big goal at the buckle one mark. Can you believe it? We're all square. Cameron, shoot, with his second of the night. What an unbelievable turn of events here, Brian. With 101 remaining in this contest, Shoop able to cash in somehow, some way. What I say about that 
It's still, still a chance. chance. <laughs> still a chance. Unbelievable right there. Just waiting and pouncing at the perfect moment. The equalizer. Well, we're going to get a foul here on the near side with Dominguez. So Ontario, they're going to have a clean look here with Stewart and company. Probably strike it with about 35 seconds. Letting some guys move up into the box. And he'll send it near post. Takes a hop. And a big foul. That's not going to get called, I think. Yeah, Cole Shear was definitely into the back of McGinty. Yeah. I think if that ball was still in the field to play, you almost have to blow the whistle. There was so much contact. As the truckers turn it away. Final chance here for the Warriors. And we are headed to extra time here at Clyde Shoop. With the monster goal at the buck 01 mark. And regulation is not enough. We'll take a timeout. We will be back with the extra session. It's golden goal time here on the OH Report. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> What's up, America? Brian Skaronski here. And if you want to see me and the gang chop it up with some unintelligent conversation, we've got the show for you. Check out the OH Report video podcast every Monday exclusively right here on the OH Report.
Halloween. <laughs> Sometimes 80 minutes just are not enough. That is the case here at Clyde. District semifinal action here between Ontario and Norwalk. And we are in extra session number one overtime here. All square at two apiece. What a huge goal. A minute and one second was all that was on the clock for Cameron Shoup to come through and be the hero. What a turn of events. We, everyone thought the game was over. Ontario versus Lexington was lined up. It was almost in the history books, but not so fast, said Shoup. Shot skips into the hands of Abdelaziz. Norwalk with, had him for just three total shots in that second half, G, but that last one really made a difference. The only score of the second half belonging to Norwalk. If you're just joining us, it was tied up, or I'm sorry, it was 2-1 at the break. First two goals of the contest belonged to Ontario. And now the last two, courtesy of the Truckers and one Cameron Shoup. Been kind of a back and forth game and a lot of momentum now. Feels like on the side of Norwalk and how could you not be excited? Yeah. You just forced overtime. Like you said, it, it almost looked like they're going to be left for dead on the side of the road, but they had a chance, and they took full advantage. And now looking to still a win in overtime. See a lot of Truckers fans out there having a good time in the chat session with that big goal, and properly so. Daniel Lopez, let's go, Norwalk, the equalizer. Gray, way to fight, Truckers. Woohoo, says Kim. Alicia, go, Norwalk, Mason G. A lot of love coming in for Norwalk, so where are you at, Warriors fans? There we go, right on cue. Thanks, Jade. Chime in so we can get both sides well represented out there. And this is golden goal situation now, G. We saw uh, last week we had an overtime match at Mansfield Senior. And kind of a newer rule, I think. It used to just play the full overtime session and go from there, whatever the score is. But now, just winner take all. Next goal ends it. Love it. See if this offense for Ontario can kind of come to life. I think they're a little, little shocked still from what happened, you know, in that end of that second half. I don't – So I'm, I mean, I'm still shocked up here, to be completely honest with you. I, I was still a little confused how Norwalk was even able to get so close to the net and have a shot that they did. I will see if they can get something going here on the counterattack. You just can't script sports, G-Man. I think that's what you learn from crazy moments like that because you're absolutely right. In real time, it was like, how are all these truckers just floating in front of the net? Sportsman. Best thing that we as human beings and civilization have created. Period. Bravo to us. Just chucking that one in, hoping the Weaver could make a play on it. And back to Papa, that didn't really have to move. Caden Bobell, get another chance at it. Oh, off 
the deflection could be an opportunity here. Spencer chases it down, gets beat to the punch, though, by Caden. Big clear by Carter. And off the misplay, looks like we've got a warrior shaking up there at midfield. Referee's going to allow them to play on, of course, as they've got the advantage. And checking in on our volleyball match that's going on right now. Tied up, one set apiece, Galleon and Colonel Crawford, and got a great third set going on, too. So if you're like one of our viewers that said that they had the big screen on one and then had us on the cell phone, check out two contests at once. Do a quick look back into the comment section. See Ava out there. Woohoo! Norwalk Chuckers loves the OH report. Hey, we, we love you too, Ava. Appreciate the, the good spirits. Shireen, let's go, big O. So keep the comments coming here in overtime. Tough situation here for Ontario. Dealing with an injured player down right at midfield. Getting a right leg worked on. And a lot of teammates starting to circle around. Just offer some support, motivation. And it's James Stewart who was down. Senior midfielders had a great night so far. Awesome season for him. He's up and walking it off. It's always good to see when you can see somebody walk off from, you know, an injury under his own power too. So hopefully he's okay. Thoughts out to him. So see so he was able to get the upper hand here in the late stages of this golden goal. First one, just five minutes down here in the first one. Yeah, I, I really like the the shift to do the golden goal because it's just a, every moment's an anxious moment. Yeah. You just you never know. Any big shot or miscue can end your night, end your season completely. And on the flip side, it can send you to the next round. It looks like we've got another injured warrior down on the field. I think that's Carter Walters, yep. He was able to pop up, though, make his way out. So Ontario now down two starters here in this extra session, G. Could play big, have, having some of these guys step in that maybe aren't familiar, especially in you know the biggest spot of the year. See one uncorked here. Oh, racing in. Weaver almost had a shot at it, punched out by Jose. Boy, what a segment there. McGinty just allowing himself to... Boom, blast that one, and man, that was heading to the top shelf. Weaver was right there, too. We'll say he's having a great night. Tremendous save from the keeper for Norwalk. Uncorked from Ontario with a lot of speed on it, too. See that previous one just sailed over top of the goal. So Ontario down two starters. Going to need some big guys to step up in big moments. Gage Weimer and Fulmer are going to have to do majority of the carrying here for Ontario. Try to look at it glass half full, getting these fresh bodies into the mix. You got all that extra energy. You've been waiting for your moment, and sometimes that's all you need. Just a chance to get out there, showcase what you can do. And the Warriors have a pretty deep roster as well. Play 15 guys on a regular night, sometimes 16 or 17. Working the ball around nicely now. Going to shift the field here. Comes down at the feet of Gage. Now Gage with the left foot. Another save by Negret. Two big saves here in the last couple of minutes. This one off the left foot of Gage Weaver. And Jose 
able to get those paws up there and save it once again and keep things tied to a piece. He has been perfect since the 18-minute mark of the opening half. Jose Negret pitched a shutout in the second half to allow Norwalk to get that equalizer. And stepping up to the challenge so far here in OT. Literal looking for a place to send the rock. And it's going to skip pay the defender here to Zane Fulmer. He's gone touchline just about every time here tonight, and this time taken away. Good piece of defending there by the truckers. Racing down in the corner, foot race with Weaver. He sheds off one of the defenders, and a late whistle comes in. I don't understand why the AR waited so long. It definitely looks like a foul. I mean, he kind of, he kind of threw him down, but he, he just waited like two extra right. ticks. Kind of slow rolled it. Warriors fans, of course, frustrated with the call. It's the 11th foul against Ontario here tonight. At seven in the second half. Ontario beginning to apply a, a lot of pressure here offensively. Norwalk really hasn't had a ton of chances here on the other side. See if something can go here for the Warriors. I think this one's going to go against Fulmer. Yeah. Sometimes you don't notice in real time and then when you get the luxury of replay, notice a few more things. This ball's going to leak through. Colahan now, turn, trying to make a play on his own. And it's going to be deflected for goal kick. Chucker Nation calling for a corner. I think this is definitely off a goal hand, yeah. And we we'll get a substitution here for the Warriors. Fulmer gonna come out. He's played some quality minutes. Been big here on the near wing. Now they got the freshman Jace Young out here. Just four minutes remain here in the extra session. Any goal ends it, folks. Warriors get it right here. Wow, stunning goal. Didn't even see it coming. Pack your bags, Warriors. You're headed to the district championship. Incredible. I don't even know how Fulmer got a hold of this. Wow. He checked out. He just checked back into the contest on the opposite side and immediately cashes it in. One more look. The only place where the keeper couldn't get it. Unbelievable. Zane Fulmer with the golden goal. 
And now he's going to be remembered in Ontario lore for a long time with the overtime victory as we're going to get an all Richland County showdown for the district final on Thursday. We're going to step aside. We will be back with the Sutton Bank post game. That's going to include final stats in an interview. Got to hear from Zane, right? We get Zane? All right, we're going to get Zane Fulmer up here in the box. We'll hear from him and more on the other side of the break. Keep it here. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
finish here at Clyde tonight. Ontario advancing to the district championship match. The golden goal by one crazy goal from Zane Fulmer. And he's out there getting hoarded by the media right now. Everybody wants a piece of this guy, and rightfully so. I mean, that, that was a pretty clever goal that he was able to put away. Clutch moment. Uh, big time for him tonight, G. Yeah, I did not... Uh See that one coming, man. To be, <laughs> I don't to, think any of us did. To be, uh, you know, frank with it, uh, and I don't know how he was even gonna get his foot up there, you know, because the ball bounced. He jumped up. He got the side of his foot somehow on it. And was able to put it in the back of the net. Not a lot of people expected that. We were coming down too to the last couple minutes of this golden goal. It was about three minutes left, and he was able to uncork one, find the back of the net for a big time goal in a big time spot. And when everyone was looking for Gage, you know, Gage Weaver and, and, and literal to be able to capitalize, it was Zane Fulmer who got it done for the Warriors and sent them to a district final versus a cross county rival that uh, they seem to not be able to knock off. So it'll be a great matchup for them Thursday, I believe at six against Lexington. Take a look at the final stats of the evening presented by Sutton Bank in Ontario. Had them doubled up in terms of their shots. The quality looks though, uh, favoring Ontario, but not as much. They did possess the ball pretty well. A lot of that came in the first half where they were crisp. We saw Norwalk then kind of take a little bit of control of the game towards the end of the first half. Didn't ever capitalize with a score. But Shoop with a couple big ones. Got it tied up. But man, the man of the match. Zane Fulmer delivering the big time shot. Just a, a lot of back and forth tonight, G. I, I think Ontario, they were the better team. They, they controlled more of the action, and they were the, the crisper, better offensive unit. Sometimes you, you just got to get the, the big goals and the huge moments. That's what they were able to do tonight. I, th I think it was tough for that last couple of minutes of regulation where Ontario kind of had a lapse about a minute and a half. They just kind of they kind of fell asleep in the biggest spot of the game. And, you know, Shoup was able to, to find back in the net and make the biggest play of the game at that point until we went into the first golden goal session where Zane Fulmer was kind of able to save Ontario here and save their season because I think Ontario was a better team today, as you mentioned, Brian. I think they outplayed them for the majority of the game. Just, you know, a couple minutes where they would have some lapses when they would fall asleep is when, you know, other teams like – we just would capitalize. Norwalk did a couple times. So Zane Fulmer, man of the hour, got it done here for the Warriors in a big spot. So Ontario, as mentioned, the number two seed moving on to take on the number one seed. So let's get some uh, quick thoughts on that match. Of course, they play in the regular season opener just about every year now on the Friday night football. Lexington has owned them. I think they've won every year since 2017 in that rivalry matchup. 3-1, they were able to knock off the Warriors this year. And I think just from getting a chance to watch both of them in person tonight, the level of competition a little bit different. Ontario going up against a pretty solid Norwalk club. Sandusky Perkins not really known for their soccer, and Lexington was able to take full advantage of that. Uh, but I think you had to be a little bit more impressed with, with the Minutemen than, than Ontario. Yeah, and I think Ontario, they, they haven't played anybody with that kind of speed since the opener, and they're going to have to go down and – it's been their arch nemesis and haven't been able to get past them. It's been their kryptonite, so to speak, and they got to draw something up that's going to be able to stop, you know, the front line of the, for Lexington. Some of those strikers, Will Perkins and Alex Debershman, it goes through them. It goes through their speed, and if you're not able to really, you know, at least stalemate them, you're not going to completely shut them out of the game and stop them, but at least to be able to contain them is going to be, I think, the biggest key for Ontario because if you let those guys, you know, play the entire length of the field, let them get, you know, their legs underneath them and they're running all over the place, it's going to be a long day for you. And it's, it's what they've seen in the, in the opening match. It's great that they at least got that first game under their belt and have seen them before, so they got at least some film to look after. So I guess we'll see how they, how they come out on Thursday night and see if they can get a win. Yeah, it's going to be one heck of a contest. We're going to still have to wait and see where the matchup is actually going to be played. We assume it's going to be moved to Richland County with it being two area squads going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We'll have more details for that later this week on the OH Report when the OHSAA elects to make that decision. So uh, we're still waiting for our guy, Zane Fulmer, to come up here into the box and have a chat with us. Tell us about the game-winning goal. He's over on the far sideline now talking to head coach Chris McClenathan, who I overheard. He's speaking very loudly to his kids after the game and said, hey, this one feels great, but it can't be the last one. Let's right. not be done yet, guys. Boy, 
Ontario would love to spoil Lexington's season. When, when they, it's, it's, these two teams, when they, when they get together, you can just feel that there's just no love lost between either of them. Once the match ends, yeah, they're buddies and all that, but not in the heat of competition, never. No, not, not a kind of rivalry game. I mean, it, it's it's a love-hate relationship that they have with those schools. And Lexington, uh, they're, they're rival. And I, I love the call. You know, it's not a rivalry unless it's, it's fair both sides. And so far, it hasn't been a rivalry. The past couple of years, Lexington has dominated it, you know, the competition uh, for the entirety of the past couple of seasons. And we'll see if Ontario can, you know, make a statement and make a name. And, you know, postseason play, throw records out the window. You're planning to move on. So we'll see if Ontario can maybe get the upset on Thursday. All right, guys, so we're going to step aside one more time. I'm going to yell down here at Zane and see if we can get him to trot up here into the box. And we will be back with the guy who scored the golden goal game winner, Zane Vollmer. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
are joined now by our man of the match, presented by Sutton Bank, Zane Fulmer. The golden goal scorer tonight in overtime. Let's just start right there. Break down the big play. It seemed like you checked out and then you came immediately back in on the other side. How did it play out through your vantage point on the field? Well, so the thing that really even got me over there was my coach. He switched me to the left side because on the left side I can cut in and I have my right foot to hit the shot. Right. And I don't even remember who it went off of. I just saw the ball in the air and there was no one on me. So I took the volley and it went in perfectly. It was, so you've been coached a little bit of credit for making that, that oh, adjustment Oh, yeah, 100%. There. It was... He wanted the credit, so I'll give it to him. <laughs> that's fair. That's yeah, fair. Yeah. Now, you were saying that you couldn't really feel your legs while you're walking <sighs> up here, and that's got to be twofold. Probably a long game, a lot of running out there, and then also you're an instant hero, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Those, some of those runs just kill you. Like, playing the winger in my position, I go back on defense and stay on offense, so that run back and forth is killing me. And then also getting tackled by every single one of my teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, describe this experience for me. Probably the biggest goal of your career, you're sending yourself to the, the district championship match, and then now you're hounded by all the media. I'm sure a lot of people wanted to stop and give you some, some handshakes and some hugs. Just the last 10 minutes, kind of describe it to me what, what this has been like. It's been crazy. Like, I've always, like, dreamt about getting that golden goal, and I did it right there, and exactly what I expected to be. Everybody coming around me, it's a great time. I was just happy to get my team onto the next level. Yeah, living a dream with your eyes wide open is the best part when you're actually you're out there and you're living it. Okay, you're moving on. You're going to be playing Lexington now, a team that very familiar with. You match up with them, it seems like, every single season. And it has been every year since you've been in high school yep. for the district championship. Tell me why it'll be different for the Warriors this season. Well, I think that this year we're, we just don't give up. Like, even according to this game, they had all the fans – Everybody was screaming for them. They had, they had the momentum, and we still didn't stop until the end of the game. That's one thing that I like about our team a lot is we just don't quit. Well, you did it tonight. You get the golden goal in the extra session. 3-2, you guys are moving on. Is there anybody that you want to send some love out to that might be watching? Now's your time for some shout-outs. Yeah, my whole family, the team, and especially James Stewart. Man, when he fell on the ground, I was, I was so upset because he's one of our main players in midfield. I scored that ball, and he came over and gave me a big hug. It was just great to have him there. All right, congratulations. Zane Fulmer, our man you, of man. the match, presented by Sutton Bank, punching the ticket for the Warriors into the district championship. All right, man, you can go celebrate with your boys now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Of course. All right, that is going to wrap up tonight's coverage here from fabulous Clyde High School. Great night of soccer, the doubleheader, and it all ends with a familiar matchup. Lexington and Ontario going to be going head-to-head. -head for the district crown on Thursday night. I want to thank everybody that helped make tonight's game possible, including our incredible staff, Adam Thompson, our director, graphic builder extraordinaire, Storm Blunchley up on the rooftop, giving you all the great looks of the game on the camera tonight, Garrett Parlett, my color commentator, and of course, all of our awesome sponsors, Avita Workwell, we had Mechanics Bank, Sutton Bank, giving us all sorts of different sponsor slots here tonight in North Central State College. For all those great people and everybody back at Oyster Port World Headquarters, I'm Brian Skronsky saying so long for tonight. We'll see you on a live stream tomorrow.